I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Shall we stand to our feet on tonight as we celebrate this most blessed worship experience? As you come in, you may find your programs that are outlined for you as we have Amen. A congregational call to worship. You may have it downloaded or look at it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. I cannot tell how silently he suffered as with his peace he graced his place of tears. Oh, how his heart upon the cross was broken. But this I know he heals the brokenhearted. Stays our sin and he calms our lurking fears. I'm so glad that Jesus is the head of our life. The psalmist once said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thy feet shall stand in thy gates, O Jerusalem, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know what you came here to do, but I will rejoice. Will you rejoice? Will you rejoice? We all shall rejoice and be glad therein. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. You may be seated at this most blessed time. God, we thank you for your power, your presence, and the purpose that has been revealed in our life. We ask, oh God, that you would have thine way in this service. We ask now, God, that our hearts would be open and attuned to how you will speak unto us on this night. Have thine way in this place. Have thine way with us. And we will be careful to give you the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It is in your most wonderful and blessed name we do pray. Amen and amen. Our hymn of praise for this evening can be found in your hymnal. Hymn number 300, Jesus keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Shall we stand, join in singing together this wonderful hymn of the church, Jesus keep me near the cross.
Somebody shout amen. Amen. Rest beyond the river. You may be seated in this place. Oh, how good and pleasant it is to be in the presence of the Lord. As we come tonight, it is Good Friday. As we lead up to the resurrection season, for those who are gathered in this place, you know, click, tag, share, invite a friend or someone to hear a word that they may be blessed to know that our God is not dead, he is alive, amen. So tonight we do celebrate Good Friday. It's good, the earth may have gotten dark because of what transpired on tonight. But we celebrate as Christians because the story does not end there. On tonight, on this special night of seven last words here at Trinity Church in D.C., amen, we have been blessed for God to bless us with our ministers here, amen, who are capable and able to preach the word, amen. And for this is for the first time, amen, that we're having our ministers, amen, to preach the seven last words, amen. It is a time for God to use them in a mighty and a marvelous way, amen. The first word on tonight is the word of forgiveness that would be uh, by Sister Shereen Harris. The second word, Sister Angela Meekins Glenn, and that word is on salvation. The third word, relationship, that will come from Brother Anthony Robertson. The fourth word, abandonment, Reverend Carlos Benson. The Fifth word, distress, brought to Paul Hogard. The sixth word, triumph, Reverend Shalita Beck. And the seventh word, reunion, Reverend Ubu Essien. Amen. Amen. Let us give God some praise. Amen. The table has been set. There is a word prepared from the Lord. Instructions have been given, and preachers are ready to preach. After this next selection, we will hear the first, second, and third, and fourth word in that order. Amen. Shall we now be blessed? with ministry in music. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. You see, I haven't been perfect, but I've sure been faithful. See, God's got a purpose, and I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground. That he's blessing, no more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground that is growing, and I'll show him this is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. You see, everything is working together for my good. I know everything is working. Together for my good. 
real good. This is my season for grace, for favor. Do you know it's your season? This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I am grateful, Lord God, for this opportunity to speak on your behalf, oh God. Give me the words to say, Lord God, and prepare the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of those who were the hearers. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen and amen. Jesus' words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, are found in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Picture it. It is about 9 a.m. in the morning and Jesus looks down at an angry and hostile crowd. He sees the Roman soldier gambling for his clothes. He hears the criminals on the cross on either side of him bad-mouthing him. The religious leaders were mocking him and the crowd was hurling insults back at him. Surrounded by this mob of people, Jesus doesn't hurl insults back at them. Instead, he prayed this prayer for them. Father, forgive them. It's a prayer of pardon, unmatched, uh, of pardon and unmatched love, unmatched mercy, and unmatched grace. Jesus chooses this act of forgiveness over retaliation and over punishment. Even in his agony, Jesus' concern was for the forgiveness of those who counted themselves among his enemies. He asked the Father to forgive the thieves on the cross who were verbally abusing him. Trash talking. Are you not the Christ? Then save yourself and save us too. He asked the Father to forgive the Roman soldiers who mocked him who spit on him, who beat him, who tore the hairs off of his face from his beard, and who put a crown of thorn on his head and ultimately nailed him to the cross. On top of that, he is also looking at the crowd who has shouted, crucify him, crucify him, even though Barabbas deserved what he should have gotten. It is important to note that forgiveness, in fact, is the reason that Jesus was on the cross. These words, Father, forgive them, show the merciful heart of God. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, because he was fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy. He bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressions from the cross. Jesus interceded for sinners. Now today, he is risen and glorified. He remains the one mediator between God and mankind. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them because he was putting into practice the principle he had taught his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it is said, love your neighbors and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus, the persecutor was praying for those who were the persecutors. Coupled with the willingness of Jesus to forgive his tormentors is the fact that they did not know what they were doing. The tormentors who put Jesus on the cross were ignorant of the true significance of their actions. It's a sad fact that sometimes we are just ignorant to the fact of our real significance in our actions. The soldiers did not personally hold any will ill towards Jesus. They were simply following orders. 
the way they treated Jesus was the way they normally treated any condemned man. And they believed that he truly deserved this treatment. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were killing the son of God. The mob didn't really know who they were trying to destroy because the Jewish leaders had deceived them into believing that Jesus was a fake, a phony, a false prophet, and a troublemaker. In praying, they do not know what they are doing. Jesus revealed his infinite mercy and his love for this world. Here's what blessed me. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive me. That prayer was answered in the lives of many. The Roman centurion at the, centurion at the foot of the cross, upon seeing Jesus die, exclaimed, Surely this man was the Son of God. One of the thieves being crucified with Jesus exercised his faith. And as a result, he received a place in paradise. Christ's prayer was answered almost immediately. And not only that, a member of the Sanhedrin publicly aligned himself with Jesus. And then a little over a month after that, 3,000 souls came to believe. On the cross, Jesus provided forgiveness. He provided forgiveness for all those who would ever believe in him. That includes you and that includes me. Jesus paid the penalty for the sins that we commit in our ignorance and for the sins that we even commit deliberately. When we are born again, repent of our sins, we too can receive forgiveness. Become, because Jesus prayed this prayer, because Jesus looked to the Father, because Jesus knew exactly the words to say on our behalf, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing because of this prayer we are forgiven bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord we are forgiven give them a praise in the house bless the lord amen praise the lord my brothers and sisters be glad to be in the house of the Lord on this day. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus, right now, just thanking and praising you, oh God, for your son. Father God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, right now that you come into the midst of this service, shift, change, and move people, some things, some spirit, oh Lord, so people can be saved on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, all right. So my word is salvation, taken from Luke 23, verse 43, but I have to do a little bit of background work real quick. Um, so let's go to verse 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him, him being Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminals rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said? Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has not done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. My, 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 hallelujah. 
So the, the, the background of this text is Jesus, the criminals, or thieves, if you may, if you like that word, hanging on their crosses. Both criminals had sin, but Jesus had sin on him. Close your eyes with me and imagine for a moment that you were hanging on the cross, knowing that you were going to die. Jesus is hanging beside you. What would your conversation be if you only had five minutes to chat with Jesus uh -huh. before dying? What would you say? My mind. All right, as we examine the text today, one of the criminals threw insults at Jesus, whereas the other criminal had a chat with Jesus. Now, if I could name this particular sermon, it would be just a little talk with Jesus, my mind. However, Jesus was on the cross, but Jesus was on the cross to die for us. The criminals who were having, the criminal who had the conversation with Jesus knew him, knew his name, knew about him. Someone had taught him about him. That particular criminal committed many crimes within the city, even though he knew Jesus, knew his name, what he was about. That tells me, give me the indication that he had a relationship with God. On the other hand, the other criminal that insulted Jesus did not have that connection with the Father at all because he would have known better. The criminal that had the relationship with Jesus had a simple request before he died. He asked Jesus to remember him when he gets to his kingdom. Amen. Mm. God has one request from us today is to develop a relationship with him, to serve him, to be with him. It does not matter if you come to church every day. It doesn't matter if you are in the nightclub on Saturday or hanging out on Friday or at happy hour during the week. What matters is your relationship with God. What matters is that, is that God remember you. He remembers your name. That's what matters. There are people who think that they cannot have a relationship with God because they do things that church folks don't do. They drink, they drug, they lie, they cheat. They have children out of wedlock. They're partying. They're doing all these other things, and they really don't think that they can have a relationship with God. But guess what? I'm here to tell you that you can have the perfect relationship with God. Yeah. God is, where, is one of those gods that just meets you where you are. You don't have to be that churchgoer. You don't have to have that family that, that prayed for you. He can meet you exactly where you need him, when you need him. Amen. Amen. Jesus died for us. Oh, my, my. We will have our ups and downs. We will have our slips and slides. We will do things wrong, but God always remember us. He always forgives us. He always gives us second, third, and fourth chances. God is the key. Salvation to paradise is the key. Jesus is saying to you and me that he wants us to be with him in paradise. Mm. Jesus is also saying to the liar that he needs to be in paradise with him. Jesus is also saying to the backslider, yes, come on with me. You need to be in paradise with me. Yeah. Jesus is also saying to the drug dealer, come on, I accept you. Let's go. You need to be in paradise with me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is also saying to the liar and the cheater, guess what? It's okay. I forgive you. You need to be in paradise with me. Salvation is the key to freedom. Free to be free. Oh, hallelujah. All you have to do to get that freedom is just say a little prayer. 
And that prayer can be just as easy as this. God, I need you. Please help me. I surrender to you. God will hear you. Mm -hmm. He will remember you. He will keep you. He will set you free. And you can be with him. Guess where? In paradise. Yeah. Mm, my, my, my. As I close on this day, just a little talk with Jesus so he can remember you, so you can be with him in paradise. My, my. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. Father God, I praise you for this word. Father, I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now, that there will be someone that hear this word that will like to be in paradise with you and that you meet them where they are. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Thank you, God. You know what I need before I even ask. So therefore, hide me and let your glory come through. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I say thank you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. My word tonight is relationship. Coming from St. John, chapter 19, verses 26 through 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Relationship. Jesus the Christ. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born to the Virgin Mary. And when Christ was near death, even then he had words of comfort for his earthen mother and the disciple that he loved. And I'm going to close out with that bit of scripture, but now let me go to the crucifixion somewhat early in where demonic forces and spiritual wickedness. I believe we're conversating about our Lord on that day. And they may have been talking in this manner, church. We could not get him when he was walking the earth and preaching the gospel. We could not get to his mind nor his spirit. We could not get him when he was preaching the holy word with all force. But now that the people, they have turned him over to us, let's use what has always worked well on others. Let's whip him. Whip him. Cat of nine tails. But God the eternal steadfast and unmovable in the work of our God. He was working in God's vineyard and he was able to carry on because he had a relationship with God the eternal along with obedience. And now he is seated on the right hand of God the eternal and will intercede for you and me at the day of judgment. And on this Friday night, we say thank you, Lord, Thank you, Jesus, for going all the way. You paid the price. Now we have a chance at life eternal. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God you are. As I close, Jesus, almighty, hear my prayer. Hear my call. Thank you for your blessings. Amen.
about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us pray. Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you have come to be with us on tonight. Now preach your word that somebody will be healed, delivered, and set free. In Jesus' name, amen. I have the word abandonment, the fourth word. Abandonment. We all abandon things in our life. So Jesus cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God didn't forsake Jesus per se, but he forsake the sin that was in Jesus, that Jesus was carrying. Is it that we don't feel God because of the sin in our life, the sin that we carry, the sin that we continue to do, knowingly do? Darkness came, and darkness to me represents the darkness that's in our life when we can't get, we don't have any sunshine when we are going through sin. We practice in sin versus trying to be better in our life, treating people with respect, treating people like they should be treated, esteeming people higher than ourselves. David cried out in Psalm 22, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? David was a righteous man, but David did a lot of things too. So in our lives, we need to check out sin. I believe God was talking to us and he was saying, abandon our sin. Abandon what we are practicing now when we deliberately sin. We all are sinners and we fall short of the glory of God. But we should be striving to live holy and righteous lives because that's what Jesus represented. Jesus is our example. So we should continue to live and strive to be better people because of Jesus Christ. Living, dying, and rising again for our sin. So check your sin in your life because sin is darkness and you can never get to where God have you to be if we're just practicing sin. So as I sit, check your sin, do diligent to be better people, treat people with respect and abandon the things that you need to abandon in your life. You will go places when you strive to be better in your life. Amen. 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 We thank God for the words that we have heard so far. Amen. Forgiveness is not necessarily about for someone else. Forgiveness, amen, is for us. Forgiveness is not even about your emotions or how you feel, amen, but forgiveness is in order that we may be able to go further to where God would have us. I'm so glad that he said in that first word, forgiveness, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And because they know not what they're doing, I'm so glad that we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because salvation is free to us all, amen. Salvation is that which we have when we receive him, who is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Relationship. Did you get that? It's never easy. But you know what? If you just stick in there, you hold fast to God's unchanging hand. At the end of the relationship, it gets tough. It gets hard. You will cry. You get upset. But the Lord will work it out. Every now and then you feel abandoned, but guess what? The Lord is right there with you. Anybody know that we serve a Lord and God? He felt abandoned. He said, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And if Jesus felt that way, if he felt abandoned, I know every 
every now and then that you feel abandoned. Someone out there on tonight may feel like they're all in it by themselves. Someone may feel like they have nowhere else to go. Someone may feel like they don't know what else to do. But I'm so glad they told us about a man named Jesus. Anybody glad we got Jesus on tonight? I'm so glad that Jesus died for me. Amen. Thank you for those first four words. And as we gather on tonight, we are not only gather just to hear a word from them, but now is an opportunity that we all can participate in order that we may become who God purposed us to be. It is through our individual acts of giving that God's blessed us. But when we come and we give together in a collective way, it is in order that we may impact the kingdom of God. I dare I ask, I challenge anyone out there watching virtually tonight, just share the gospel on tonight. Invite one person to be able to hear a word. Amen. Invite one person to know about the goodness of Jesus. Imagine if all of us reached one person for Christ, the impact that we can have on the kingdom. So I challenge you as we go into Resurrection Sunday, go tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. But it's now offering time, and we're preparing to give. We have several ways to give electronically. We ask that you will look at the screen. You can give through Givelify. You may give through Cash App. Um, if you still write checks, amen, you can mail those in to 3505 16th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. 20010. Amen. And we know that God will bless you. We know we pay our tithes, but it's an offering that we go above and beyond that God will continue to bless us to be able to bless the kingdom. With our offering in our hand, let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of giving. We thank you for a heart of generosity. God, we thank you that you have given us so much that we don't even have room enough. We don't have enough to give back to you. So God, those of us who are receiving the gifts, allow us to be good stewards over that which thy people give. Someone is giving from afar. Someone is giving from across the globe. Someone is giving right here in these pews, and we know it shall make an impact in the kingdom. Thank you. We love you. We adore you. This we ask in the wonderful name of him, whose name is above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus, whom is the Christ. Amen. And amen. The ushers will bring the pans around as we receive our offering on tonight. Those who are watching virtually, dare trust God and just give from your heart as God will certainly bless. He's already blessed and he's blessing even us right now. Amen. As we prepare for the second portion of this service on tonight. It don't take a whole lot of time, amen, to hear a word. We just need to be able to hear a good word and know that God is blessing us. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand to our feet on tonight as we bless the offering? Amen. Amen. You may lift the offering. God, we thank you for the offering that was given. We thank you for the hands that gave. God, now out of our abundance, we thank you. We adore you. We love you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, let us all say together, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Now we will hear, amen, the three words from the cross from Reverend Dr. Paul Hogard, Reverend Shalita Beck, 
and Reverend Hessian in that order. Amen. Before he do come, we have a selection. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we have a ministry moment through song at this time. Thank God this evening for the interconnectedness of Jesus. How Jesus is using seven preachers for the seven last words at the seventh hour here at Trinity Amy Zion Church. After this, when Jesus knew 
that everything was now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. Yeah. A parenthetical clause, mm -hmm. a comma, mm -hmm. after everything mm -hmm. was finished, yeah. that the scripture might be filled, yeah. comma, he said, I'm thirsty. There's the pause after the comma. Yeah. Jesus now has been from Gethsemane. He has prayed and his prayers, his forehead is dripping blood from the zeal of his prayer. He's been betrayed by Judas. Mm -hmm. He's gone before Caiaphas. Mm -hmm. He's been accused by the Sanhedrin. He's been taken by a Roman centurion to be first scourged. He's been beaten beyond human recognition. He's been now, after a Simon the Cyrene, a uh, man from Libya yeah, yeah. who just happened to be there in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he is carrying with assistance with Simon yeah. uh, a cross. Uh, not the entire cross, but the cross bar. Uh -huh. Some 80 to 120 pounds and he is on his way to be crucified. Yeah. Oh, he is bleeding profusely. He's got stripes on his back. And as Isaiah said, by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, after all of this, the blood is flowing now in his lungs. Oh, he's on a cross and there's a step at the bottom of the cross that he has to push himself up to be able to breathe. Oh, he can't breathe. Oh, we heard that before. I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but he says, I thirst. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the next scripture mm -hmm. tells us mm -hmm. a jar full of sour wine was sitting there. Yeah, yeah. So they fixed the sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch. Yeah and held it to his mouth. Yeah. Matthew tells us that he turned it down. That sour wine, that vinegar, was what the Roman soldiers drank. Oh, but they gave him gall. Mm -hmm. Oh, the poppy seed. Oh, but not just the poppy seed, but the maggots that had crawled into the poppy seed. Oh, they were mocking the king of kings. They were mocking the son of God. They were mocking my Jesus. They had put him through a crucible that is beyond our imagination. But he went through all of this and still said, let me clear my throat. Oh, Jesus on the cross said, even after all that I've been through, I still see my God 
telling me that he's going to bring me through this. Oh, in all of what we've been through, it's good to know that God's got us in his hand. Oh, he's looked and forgiven others. He looked at his mother and told her that I'll send a disciple to take care of you. Oh, he took care of a thief on the cross. Oh, he's still taking care of others. But he has this parenthetical clause between a bracket letting us know that he has suffered everything that humans can suffer. That no matter what trials people have gone through, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son When I think of those that were lynched mm -hmm. here in the United States, oh, great God Almighty, mm -hmm. he's been good. Yeah. He's been good to others. Yeah. And all we have to do is have faith. Yeah. Have faith that he will quench your thirst. It's not that you're thirsty. It's just how you fill your thirst. Fill them with Jesus. Fill them with scriptures. Fill them with the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, I pray at this moment that you would come before this word, make it plain, make it rich, give it the power, the victory, the triumph that it deserves. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 My word, the sixth word, comes from John 1930. When he had received the drink, Jesus said it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What did Jesus come to accomplish? What was finished? What was this mission that was now finished. Why did Jesus come? We know that he came to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring life, to destroy the devil's work, to testify to truth, to save us from our sins, and to take away sin. He came to save, and he gave his life as a ransom. The cross hung heavy on Jesus during his last days. He struggled in the Garden of Gethsemane. What was the point at which he surrendered to his Father's will? And now he has taken on the sins of man and died on the cross to finish it. It appears one singular idea comes from the word, it is finished. Completion, fulfillment, and finishing. 
completed, finished, and accomplished, which means to complete an activity or a process, to finish. As it relates to time, it means to come to an end and to be over. The tense of this verb is important for us because it signifies a past action that continues into the future. It has been completed, past tense, fulfilled, present tense, and it has been accomplished, future tense, in the purpose for which it was designed to fulfill. What am I saying to you, beloved? It was, is, and shall forever be finished. The triumph, the victory, is that God pulled, called his son forward, gave his only begotten son the responsibility of redeeming his chosen people back to him by the sacrifice and the shedding of his blood unto death. Jesus' cry was not only an announcement of accomplishment, but it was also an announcement of obedience fulfilled this shout began in the painful will of his father through suffering and death on the cross, but ended with an announcement of full obedience to his father. Make no mistake about it. The ability to say it is finished was the culmination of a life of obedience, humility, and service that ushered in a new era. When we meditate on the sixth word from the cross, what should we learn for our lives? This is what I see. We are to live our lives with a purpose. Unless Jesus had a purpose, a mission to complete, otherwise the words, it is finished, would have little to no meaning. He wasn't speaking of his earthly life that was finished. His life had no beginning and it had no end. He was speaking about that which the Father had instructed him to do. Our lives may not be so clear, so purpose-driven as, as Jesus' life was, but I believe that one of the signs of maturity in our lives is to discern our spiritual gifts and abilities and then order our lives to maximize what God has given us. We are to live lives of focus. Living life, lives of purpose requires us to focus on our priorities. Instead of living scattered lives, we need to live our lives laser focused on God's plan and his purpose. This requires discipline. It means saying no and some choices so that we can say yes to the opportunities that are better before us. We are to live lives of obedience. To be obedient says it is finished. Our lives must be marked by obedience. Jesus is God, but in his earthly life, he, was, he willingly obeyed his father. He humbled himself and, and became obedient in death. Paul said this, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Obedience is the opposite of independent action. It means living in obedience to God. 
and not living in obedience to ourselves. We must be willing to suffer to achieve God's purpose. We must be willing to achieve God's purpose in our lives. We continue with the sunny summer days as well as the stormy winter nights. We don't give up just because things are difficult. We are willing to suffer whatever is necessary to complete God's plan for our lives. When our lives are over, we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Share this prayer with me in closing to the sixth word. Please repeat after me. Father, I wasted so much time moving in my own will. Please rein me in so that I may focus well only be your purpose and direction in my life. Help me to finish this race well. In Jesus' name. I pray. I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Celebrate Jesus. To Dr. Freeman and the Trinity leadership, uh, I just am so overwhelmed and grateful, Dr. Freeman and Trinity Church, for the opportunity to always share from this pulpit. And I don't take this lightly at all. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the fact that the ministry of the word has been so powerful tonight. Why don't you just put your hands together for all these ministers that have spoken tonight. Oh, hallelujah. And even if I have nothing to give you, I believe that you have gotten enough. Praise the Lord. My task is to speak on the seventh word, the word of reunion. Taken from Luke chapter 23 verse 46 and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice he said father into thy hands I commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghosts a beautiful house or edifice can never be appreciated unless the builders carefully execute the building plan or follow the building process. In other words, for you to get to your destiny, the entire process must be completed. This text reveals three important things that I must share with you tonight. And I believe by the power of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you have already received enough. Praise the Lord. First, Jesus wisely exercises delegation. Secondly, Jesus is committed to go through the process. Third, a miracle is always possible when we do God's will. Jesus wisely executes or exercises delegation. He has given his submission to the people who chose Barabbas over him. He has given his body to the Sanhedrin council. He has submitted to Pontius Pilate. Jesus has forgiven the people at the foot of the cross. A place in paradise has been given to one of the thieves. 
he has given his mother to John and vice versa. Jesus has given freedom to the Roman soldiers. But above all, he gives his spirit to the Father. What does this mean? This means that tonight, Jesus empowers us to know that there are some things in your life and in your destiny that only God is authorized to handle. I said everybody is not authorized to handle precious things and delicate things in your life. Not your mother, not your father, not your sister, not your brother, not your supervisor, not your friend, but God. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Just look at that neighbor in the eye and say to him or her, put it in God's hands. That's where it is secure. Praise the Lord. Secondly, Jesus is committed to go through the process. Dead on the cross reveals Jesus in his full humanity, suffering and enduring pain on our behalf. Why? Because he has been broken and wounded for our transgressions. He was broken and wounded so you and I may remain whole. Your friends may betray you. Your supervisor may dump on you. Your neighbor may hate you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor it is only a process. That was not a good neighbor. Turn to the other side. Tell your neighbor it's only a process. Because when you go through it, while you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For what? Thou art with me. God is going to be with you. I don't care who is in the White House. Ah, just a, a few years ago, I could feel the tension in our black community. Ah, prayer was going up every minute. I recall in this pulpit, the pastor was praying profusely. Ah, but God came through. Even when you were going through what you were going through, God was with you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Yeah. My third and final point is that the text reveals that a miracle is possible when we do God's will. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. This means never again will Jesus be in the hands of wicked men. This, we, this means never again will he suffer shame. Even when uh, uh, the darkest night comes, <laughs> there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Turn to your neighbor and high five your neighbor. I say high five your neighbor right now and say it is over. Neighbor, it is over. It is over. No more will people, you know, hold you. You know that naked, you know, naked, rare naked chip, you know, chop that they hold your children on the streets. And the, 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 the system does not believe that you really believe that, that, that you really, you know, your life or your rights matter. Uh, they don't believe that your voice matter when they have taken everything from you, when the enemy has stolen your health, when cancer has broken up your body. 
I, I tell you what, God will come through. Yes. Uh, are you hearing me? Uh, because something happened. Yes. Uh, and uh, Dr. Freeman, at the point of the fifth word, I think the fourth word, we found out that there was a contract. There was a contract. And that contract was that Christ was supposed to go through it alone. He didn't need anyone to help him. And so, after he had gone through it all, all that was left was his voice. Dr. Freeman, he pulled off himself. And he shouted with a loud voice, Father, into thine hands. I commend my spirit. I don't know about you, but if I have anything left, it is my voice. Tonight, I want you to shout. It is over. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but it is so good to hear the word of the Lord. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. Amen. As we look at the seven words, amen, the seven last words, we celebrate this as Good Friday. I know some may be looking like, what is so good about Friday? Because on Friday, they led my Savior to Calvary. On Friday, they, the night before, they, they whipped them all night long in these hours. Amen. What is so good about Friday when he had to go up that hill carrying that cross? Amen. What is so good about Friday when he was bleeding from his head and, and the word was said that they hung him on a cross and they hung him high and they stretched him wide. What is so good about Friday when he had to forgive those that was killing him? What is so good about Friday that he was going to be separated from his mother? Mother and mother from son. What is so good about Friday that our own Savior was hanging on the cross and for a moment say, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? What is so good about Friday that he was distressed and, and couldn't get anything to drink and, and he had to lift himself up just so he could get some air into his lungs? What is so good about Friday that they pierced him in his side and they put a crown of thorns on his head? What is so good about Friday when they ridiculed him and, and persecuted him and they tried to shame him by saying king of the Jews. What is so good about Friday when they looked at him and made a mockery of him? Do you know what's so good about Friday? I just came to ask somebody out there, do you know what's so good about Friday? Do you know what is so good about Friday when they killed my savior and he gave up the ghost and he died? Does anybody know what's so good about about Friday, even when they took him off a cross and put him in a borrowed tomb. Is anybody still wondering what's so good about Friday? Because even though tomorrow is going to be quiet, I got good news tonight. It's good for us because Sunday is coming. Anybody know that Sunday is coming? Oh, that's the resurrection moment. Somebody ought to thank God and say Sunday is coming. You ought to look at yourself and say Sunday is coming. I want somebody to put that in the chat. Sunday is coming. Uh, he died so that I may live. Is anybody glad that he died for you? Is anybody glad that he took care of you? Anybody glad that he watched over you on a metro? And it could have been us in D.C. that was shot just like the people in Brooklyn. Is anybody glad that the Lord looked after you uh, when he allowed you to come up to this church on tonight? Is there anybody glad on tonight that he died for you in order that you may live through cancer and a bad prognosis? I've got good news on the night for someone who wants to give up and somebody who wants to throw in the towel. i got good news for the distressed sister on tonight. i got good news for the worn out brother on tonight. i got good news. I do, brother Tony, for the one that want to throw in the towel. Guess what, sister Angela? Sunday is coming. Somebody in here right now should just be walking in a circle and talking to themselves. Oh, it got dark, but Sunday is coming. Somebody ought to be clapping their hands. Sunday Sunday is coming. Somebody ought to be saying, I can't wait for Sunday. I can't wait to celebrate my Savior. I'm going through right now. But if I hold on joy, 
will come in the morning. Is there anybody out there to say Sunday is coming? Sunday's coming. Brother McCain, Sunday coming. Uh, Sister LaShonda, Sunday is coming. Even when they get on your nerves at your job, guess what? Sunday is coming. Oh, Dr. Harry, you may have been through some ups and some downs and may want to throw it in a towel and almost lost it. But guess what? Sunday is coming. I'm not celebrating the dead stuff. I think I heard a preacher say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. You better get here early on Sunday because uh, Sunday is coming. And you know what? When Sunday comes, as a matter of fact, I don't need no organ. I might need that little drum. I don't even need a piano. As a matter of fact, the preacher don't even have to say nothing because when I get into the sanctuary, all I got to do is think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all he's done for me because guess what? Two years ago, I couldn't even come in that church and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. It was on March of 2020. I couldn't and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Some of y'all ain't been to church since 2019 and been able to praise the Lord on Resurrection Sunday. But guess what? Sunday is coming. So everybody better watch out. I might not have a new suit. You may not have a new outfit. Your shoes may be old. But guess what? God has done a new thing. Sunday is coming. I'm going to praise him like it may be my last time. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Somebody out there need to know about Jesus. If you don't know him as your savior, you need to come on to the altar and say, I want to get to know this Jesus that died for me. I, I, I got to get right relationship with him. I got to understand that a God who was in time, who forgave me in past time, in order that he may prepare me for future time, that's the kind of God I serve. I serve a God that allowed me to know that I was going to be saved even before I knew I was saved myself. I serve a God that wants me to have right relationship with him when I didn't have a mind to praise myself. Don't you know some of y'all should have been counted out in 1976 for some of the stuff you did in 1978 and 1983 and you mean to tell me that you still here with a right portion of reasonable health and strength and somebody looked at your past and realized where you were 20 years ago they wouldn't believe in themselves. Look at what God is going to do. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Yeah, yeah, you watching me on the stream and some of us in church right now, but, but 25 years ago, some, some of you was right down there on U Street and 14th Street. I'm talking about the old days. Uh, you were running around just like everybody else and thought you was going to lose your mind. I ain't talking about D.C. right now. Some of y'all know what it was like 20 and 30 years ago, and you were right there in the thick of it. And if it had not been for the Lord, look where he brought you from. Some of you buried friends, family members. Some of you walked slow behind a lot of people since resurrection of 2019. That's right, we wasn't here Resurrection Sunday 2020. Some of y'all were looking at a stream. As a matter of fact, if I can recall, it was me, Rebecca, maybe a few other preachers right here, and Sister Alex, Sister Henderson, and we were preaching to a screen and a bunch of empty pews. And I thought it was going to be over, Brother McCain, in April or June of 2020. But 2021 rolled around, still preaching in an empty building. But I'm so glad that in 2022, that Sunday is coming, and nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. I'm going to be in the house to give God praise. Sunday is coming. Sunday's coming. If you don't have a church home, come. Decide today. What's so good about Friday? In the midst of a murder. Because they thought they killed him. But he said, Father, and to thy hands I commend my spirit. The world can't take nothing it don't own. You belong to God. You ain't lost nothing that the Lord ain't already has as part of his purpose. And if you lost it, something greater must be coming. So if you're here tonight, come. If you don't have a relationship, if you don't have a church home, come.
those out there watching virtually, Sunday is coming to you, the one who's looking at your screen tonight and about to give up. Sunday is coming, and we pray that we're going to see you here because that's the kind of love that God gives. God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. No greater love than thee that we have known. So, Lord, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for coming into our lives, and we thank you for redeeming us and reconciling us, but most importantly, saving us. God, we thank you that the tomb was empty. It's dark tonight. You gave up the ghost tonight. You were in distress on tonight, but we celebrate because the story don't end there. Sunday is coming, and we praise you. This we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Somebody give the Lord some praise. We thank you for joining us on tonight. Trinity, will you give these preachers a hand? Amen. We thank God for our preachers. Amen. For delivering a word that only God had given them. So we thank God for the word that he poured into them and that they poured out onto us. We look forward to worshiping with you on Resurrection Sunday morning. Come. Don't expect the unusual. We will have a special worship leader with us on Sunday morning. Amen who's going to sing unto the glory of God, and we're just going to come and worship the Lord in obedient fullness. Amen. We're going to come in here. We're going to hear a song. We're going to praise. We're going to hear the word, and then we're going to celebrate Jesus. Amen. So if you're coming for formality, don't worry about that. We're just coming Sunday to celebrate the resurrected Savior because he is our Lord and our King. Invite your neighbor and your friend. Turn to our YouTube channel as we will celebrate Resurrection Sunday together. We're going to come in here on Sunday morning. Guess what? The funeral has been canceled. They canceled that funeral, amen? And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shout because the funeral has been canceled. We thank all of you for joining us here at Trinity A.M.B. Zion Church where we believe in equipping minds, empowering people, and embracing worship. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. For this reason, the Father loves me because I laid down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and he says I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. Father, in the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we say, amen. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout Sunday is coming. May we see you on Sunday morning. Have a wonderful evening. Amen. Amen. And amen.